Oh man, whoa, so, yeah, I know a lot of the times I've been, at least on this channel and the stuff that I've been putting out, was, has been focused on a lot of the AR stuff, right? You know, augmented reality, animation, black storytelling, all that stuff, right? Uh, but many people often forget that, like, I've been trying to get into medical school, right? And so, as we know, it's, it's you know, rejection season at this point. But um, I did it. So I literally went and got an email. And normally I get these emails, these rejections, right? Where it's like, you know, better luck next time. But with this one, it literally said, welcome to UNR Med. And it's like, congratulations on behalf of, you know, the staff and the students. It's a great pleasure of inviting you to join the University of Nevada, Reno, class of 2025. Uh, your admissions reflects the confidence of our admissions committee and in the valuable addition, you will have, you know, you'll be, you'll be part of this. And for me, this is wild. You know, words get like, honestly, like words can't describe how I feel about this because I started this journey in 2014, 2015, when I retired from playing football and I was just trying to find a way to uh, make it as a freelancer, as an artist and realize that, that that's just not the place for me, right? I ended up working on a documentary that you know, really exposed me to, to some of the stuff that physicians were doing. And that really sparked my interest to, to just dive deeper into this, right? Because like, I don't know, for many black people, if, you, if you're if you growing up and you show an interest in math and science, uh, people instantly think uh, that like, okay, you could be a doctor, right? But the reality is that I never was, I've never been treated by a black doctor. And I, you know, have friends that uh, have parents that are doctors. Uh, but, you know, the idea of like me being a, a, a physician, a black physician over being an athlete was, uh, you know, it just wasn't a thing. And for me, like it, it, it really, it really sunk in once I started to realize like in my generation, everybody that I grew up with, you know, I, I know freaking 10, 15, 20, 30, 30 guys that went to the league, right? But I know none of them that are trying to be physicians. You know, I kind of know one, I know one that, you know, is trying to be a lawyer, but that's about it, right? Like from where I'm from, like you're more likely to, to go to the NFL than to go to medical school. And so to see this be a reality, it, it's, it's wild. Like it, it just feels good. Like it, it, I would say it's a breath of fresh air because if you follow me on this channel, and you follow a lot of the stuff that I sort of talk about and, and the videos I post and the, and the podcasts and stuff, the conversations I have. And it's talking about like just trying to find that balance. And, you know, like this is this is it's gritty. It's it's hard. It's 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 long. You know, it's really long. I didn't expect it to be that long, uh, but I did it. You know, like I made it into medical school and in many ways, like I I really didn't know what this what this feeling would feel like, right? And and it's just overwhelming relief. And I and I think it's because like over this journey, like I, I had to go back to school. And when I went back to school, I had to go back to undergrad, not even grad school. So I was taking undergrad classes after having my masters, after leaving a career, uh, taking out student loans. Uh, having to get a full-time job and, and working working odd jobs and then being a full-time student to make ends meet. I, you know, had a credit card and, and, you know, maxed the balance out of that just to just to make ends work so I could study. Countless all-nighters just trying to figure out this whole thing with OCHEM and all that. And that sort of culminated like the first two years. And then the next three, four, four years after that, studying for the MCAT, taking immersion courses and 
and having to quit my job and, and ask, you know, friends and family for money to like make ends meet and all that stuff really followed in and, and it was a journey, right? And I applied three times and, and the interesting thing about it, right, is like I kept track of what it all took. And so for me, I always wanted to see like at the end of it, when I get in, if and when I get in, like how long, like how much money and how much time does it take to do that? And because the one thing that I've been trying to figure out is why is it that what are the things that stop black people from getting into medical school? Because I don't know if you know, but compared to other populations, right? Like black people, black men in particular are underrepresented, right? Like considering the population. And so you have uh, you know, indigenous communities, you have uh, Latinx communities, you have Asian communities, and then you have black communities. And at the bottom of it is freaking black men and women consistently across all demographics. And in particular, we're seeing a trend of just not a lot of black men being physicians. And, you know, for me looking at the numbers, it's like I'm one of what? 2,000, 3,000, less than 3,000, you know, black men that got into medical school. Like it, it's just, it's just wild, you know? And so I actually have a spreadsheet that I've been working with to actually keep track of all this stuff, right? And so disregard the, you know, disregard all the stuff that you see, but like, you know, round one, I applied to all these different schools and I got rejected by all of them. You know, some of them I got secondaries from, but got rejected by all of them. Round two, because round one was in 2017, round two was in 2019, and round two, I, I applied to some schools, but I, I really tried to switch it up. Um, some schools still didn't even get back to me. I mean, to this day, they just, they just didn't even give me the time of day. Uh, but from that, you know, I, I ended up getting two interviews one from OHSU and one from Reno. And, you know, I thought that I was going to make it that time around. I really, honestly, I really thought that I was going to get into medical school the second time I applied because I improved my MCAT score. I got it up to a, a, a 501. My GPA isn't going to get any better than it is now at this point. I've taken 88 courses. And I really thought that you know, if I can get it, if I get an interview, then I will be able to show that I deserve to be in medical school. And I got the interview and I got two and, you know, for one reason or another, like I didn't get that acceptance that time. And so when I was sitting there, I was really thinking like, hmm, I'm not going to, I don't think that this is going to be like, I'm not going to apply this, this next cycle. And, you know, people that I talked to, they, they talked me out of that idea. They said, you know, you deserve to be in the medical school and you deserve to get in. And, and, and so I had help. I had people that helped me sort of navigate this space. I changed my list a lot, as you can see. And from there, you know, disregard all the red, you know, but I got, I applied to 34 schools, 34 schools. And of those 34 schools, I ended up getting 25 secondaries and then from those 25 secondaries I ended up getting three interviews and from those three interviews I ended up getting accepted into two schools the University of Illinois and the University of Nevada Reno and you know the the thing about this spreadsheet that I have is that you know I looked up all the metrics and everything that that I had for them and every time right like the primaries and the secondaries for round one, you know, $1,400, $1,800, you know, primaries and secondaries for uh, the second round, $1,500, uh, $1, you know, $1,000 for secondaries. And then the price for my primaries for, um, you know, the other ones, it, it just, you know, it just, it just kept getting bigger and bigger. Like, and then you have the Casper test that you have to do. And so for my 2019 application, 
I spent two thousand dollars on just applying. In 2020, I spent eighteen hundred dollars on just applying. And then the applications for the recent cycle, I spent essentially over three thousand dollars on it. And then I for MCAT prep, I spent thirty like three thousand on it. For the AMCAS, I spent 150. Like at the end of all this, right? At the end of all this, I ended up spending eleven thousand dollars just trying to get into medical school, and that's just on applying over the past three years. Eleven thousand dollars over those three application cycles, and to me, it was just like, not only is there a financial barrier, but there's also you know just a just a barrier to access to things right because not only do you have to pay not only did i have to pay eleven thousand dollars you know to get to this point but i also had to spend i had to give up opportunities i had to get volunteering i had to do all these different things that it just becomes really really difficult to do and i just this is this is why black people aren't getting into medical school because there's so many hurdles that you have to navigate and you know from there it's I've always had this feeling of like, okay, I'm an artist. I have a lot to offer. And, you know, given the situation, given the opportunity, I will succeed. And interestingly enough, like as the AR stuff picked up, like as it freaking picked up, the same stuff I was doing last year, two years ago, all the other times I was applying, uh, as that picked up, that became more interesting to schools. And, and so when I was having conversations with people, you know, they were giving me, they were interested in it. And I, I think that really spoke to, you know, really the climate of where medical schools are going, kind of, where what do you have to offer beyond just your, your scores? And for me, I, just, I had a 3.0 GPA and a 501 MCAT. You know, and I played football. I was a student athlete. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a developer. I make AR stuff in emerging technology. I animate. I make cartoons. I'm an educator. I teach at a community college and I do a lot of residencies with, uh, you know, educational platforms and entities. I'm tapped in with the community. I host podcasts and, and workshops for uh, community entities I, I I try to do as much stuff as I can because I know that they they appreciate it and I could have an impact with the things that I th that I do and throughout this process I've always been asked you know why do I do half the things that I'm doing or why don't I just narrow down my choices because you know, you can only do so much as a doctor or you can only do so much in medical school. And it's like, yeah, I understand that. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is all about people and it's all about uh, treating people and connecting with people. And the stuff that I do is focused around people. And so for me to continue being tapped in and focused around people, I think that enhances how I can how I can give care. And it it it, it was just really it was it's been an interesting journey, I would say, because for me, you know, I, I always thought like, what are the thing, what will pick up more? Will the art stuff pick up or will medical school pick up? And to see that both of those are hitting at the same time, it's, it's just surreal. Like it, it's, 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 you know, I'm just dumbfounded, you know, at the realities of this right like you know it, it's yeah yeah i'm gonna be a doctor like this is this is wild i you know out of all this like out of all this journey like everybody just kept saying if you don't quit you'll be good just don't quit don't quit and you know i didn't and it like and the whole like the whole process freaking sucked right like 
especially like I had the opportunity to go through traditional application season where you have to fly to places and show up and do all the hoops and ladders and MMIs and all that stuff. I had to do that. And, you know, that was a that was an interesting experience. And then I had this experience where it was completely virtual and throughout all the madness that happened in 2020, um, you know, things worked out. I would say that like one thing that was frustrating though was because like people became more interested in what I was doing because I was having an impact in other places. It was going beyond just taking a test and MCAT scores and all that stuff that you always freaking see, right? You know, I was I was able to have conversations with with schools and diversity offices and stuff about you know how I can be an asset and they could clearly see it but then when it came down to it I would still get a rejection you know I was I would garner attention but that attention was short-lived and part of it they would just be like hey because your grades are too low for the type of applicant that we would consider in your situation if you were a resident of this state it would be a different story but because you're not a resident then we ha you have to be set to a higher standard that you don't live up to and i thought that was really interesting because for me as all this stuff is going on mind you like i'm getting asked to speak at the wall street journal thing i'm getting asked to speak at you know international platforms you know, I'm a thought leader in this and I'm teaching and I'm doing all these different things like things are blowing up around me. Right. But I'm still getting the rejections because I can't I don't live up to an expectation. And I think when we're talking about these this idea of, you know, equity and access and stuff, especially because of last year where COVID is disproportionately affecting black people. Right. And there's a shortage of black people in the healthcare field. And that's affecting the care that black people get during such a tumultuous time and you know it's just like these realities are literally right here and and then we're saying oh there's not a lot of black people going into medical school and and then you have somebody that's black that's doing all the things that hit the mark but then you're saying oh his grades aren't his grades aren't good enough because the stuff that he was doing pre while he was a, an athlete or a student athlete 10 years ago as a freshman and junior are uh, are the things that are going to dictate his opportunities because mind you like i have a 3.07 gpa overall as an undergrad not including my graduate work right i got a master's in arts and interdisciplinary studies studying art visual representation in psychology and sports medicine and so a combination of that i did a thesis i became an author and i made a documentary off of that and you know i graduated grad school with a, a 3.7 and then i went into a post back where i maintained a 3.5 and i even got freaking a hundred percent on in organic chemistry twice you know and that was a that was something that you know i really had to overcome right so, or oak him if you know oak him that mess is a beast and i i gritted my teeth and did it right but to sit here and say that you know the reason i didn't get into schools was because um my grades were too low for who i'm being you know who i'm trying to be considered with it's like, who am I actually being considered with? How many of those people are actually black, right? Like, how many of those people are actually black? And how is this, how how does this not perpetuate something that has been happening and, and we're supposed to be aware of it? It's, a, it's something that really sort of stood out to me because there's tons of data showing that, you know, black and brown students, regardless of, you know, socioeconomic status, are going to have lower grades com comparable to uh, white and Asian co counterparts just there's social things that that affect black and brown students that just don't affect those that have just a little more privilege and 
you know it, it's to to not be aware of that and then try to have that same standard for for everybody it i think it i think it's disingenuous when you're trying to promote diversity and stuff and so you know it, it's this is this is just my story right like this is all the stuff that i have gone through just throughout this process and this isn't even talking about like all the ar stuff because all the ar stuff now it's like i'm going into the field of medicine and ar is going to be a 200 billion dollar industry and the field of medicine is interested in exploring emerging technology in a way that they haven't been before and so the intersection of me learning and getting deeper into medicine and getting deeper into ar at the same time like it, it's a it's a i think it's a valuable opportunity for me because i don't know if there's any i don't know if there's any other you know medical students going into into medical school that has the background that i have in you know technology and, and storytelling and stuff and more importantly i don't think any of them are black like that that's the wild part right like it's 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 wild like and so you know like it, it's i try not to like compare things and compare myself to people uh but it's really difficult not to compare yourself to other people when you're going through this process because the process lends itself to like you having to compare and and take it personal when you don't when uh when you get rejected you know uh some schools I, I did take it personal like i did but on the flip side like the reason i um you know the reason i chose reno is because it was personal i would say that the director of admissions you know she when i met her after i got rejected from them uh i met with her you know we talked she she convinced me to to apply and and she made that connection and i honestly think that if you know if i didn't you know have the conversation and connect with her and and seeing how much she you know believed in me and saw something in me i honestly don't like i wouldn't have applied literally i was not going to apply this cycle and then this whole this like my life would not be the same like i would not be having this conversation be talking about this and so for me like i am forever grateful because not only did i have people convince me that i that i i could do this and should do this but then when things didn't work out they convinced me that i that i have to continue because of the implications of it if i don't and the implications of it if i do and you know like th this is this is something that i'm seeing like as me being really like focused on community like this is this is something that like is beyond me like this is something that is impactful in a in a very meaningful way and you know i as i as i sort of prepare for this next phase of my life that's getting ready to change um i'm starting to see like this the impact already like i haven't even gotten the white coat yet like i'm not even the student doctor yet and like i'm, I'm seeing just with covid and the vaccines and stuff like family members are hitting me up people are looking to me in the community uh to really just ease their ease their worries and stuff like it, it's it's so people oriented and that the whole idea of like grades and stuff dictating you getting these opportunities is just asinine you know it, it's yeah like it, it's it's a thing you know but like it's it's exciting it's scary like i I will say like I'm I don't know what to expect but I'm excited to go down this pathway because this is I mean this is life changing right here and I'm I'm just ready to take on that mantle of being a physician you know <laughs> like it, it's it's 
it's it's it's wild and so again thank you everyone for just the support and everything up and down this path it's been long and it's been frustrating but it's also it's also been just like really exhilarating and exciting at the same time i never thought that i would get to this point where i i, I imagine possibly getting here but i didn't know what it actually felt like and it feels like such a big relief like i'm excited but uh in and i i can't wait for things to happen but it's it's such a just a breath of fresh air that like all this hard work w was not for nothing you know and and the effects of it the consequences of all this hard work just makes the result just so much better and so super excited to to head to reno uh really i mean i'm no lie i'm like super bitter that you know one of the schools that rejected me was oetishu and i you know that was one of the dreams is to move to portland get into portland state and then go to oetishu that that's that was the goal um and it didn't happen and in in some ways i'm i'm glad it didn't happen because i'm going to a place that i feel more accepted and more appreciated and i think that that pr creates a climate that allows me to uh really flourish and do the things that i set out to do with people that um you know are passionate just as passionate as me and so they might not know the ar stuff but hey you know like that that you know that's one youtube video away though and uh but it, it's a it's a it's a wonderful journey to to sort of be accepted by a community that um uh in 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 their own special way and so uh and so yeah you know if you're ever in reno hit me up i reno small and and it's close to family so it, it's great and so yeah i really appreciate everything everyone and i appreciate all the time and, and energy and stuff over the years uh with all the videos that i that i posted about my my medical school journey and you know i i just can't wait to see what this you know yield so yes it means like the end of my journey in portland uh will be coming soon but you know maybe maybe residency or something i may be back i don't know we'll see we'll see you know but uh you know definitely check out pdx black rose check out black superheroes matter uh, if you want to support your boy on Patreon, be sure to. Uh, hey, I got I got medical school bills to pay now, right? So, you know, I'm either going to be taking out three hundred thousand dollars in debt, or you know, I you know get the get the YouTube channel popping and stuff. AR starts popping, sell a million copies of a book. I don't know, uh, but it it does create a different landscape that I can navigate now, which is great. And I and I I'm so willing to you know explore that option. And so with it, uh, check out Iltopia Studios, shop.iltopia.com, uh, and obviously stuck on an island, stuck in augmented reality. No, didn't we reference some AR stuff? And I and I think that uh, with some of the things that I've, the conversations I've had with uh, with medical schools and hospitals and physicians in the, uh, about AR and the stuff that I'm doing uh, as a as a as a student doctor, I think I'll have a lot of latitude and liberty to to explore those things, much, uh, compared to those that don't have a stake in in healthcare now. You know, when you put that MD next to it, you know people people want attention. Like people will give it attention. It doesn't matter if it's art. It doesn't matter if it's dancing. It doesn't matter if it's keto. Like if you put that MD next to it, like that that comes with a, a level of uh, you know. It give it generates attention that I think the the work that I'm doing in social impact and in accessibility with AR I think that that attention can go in in the right direction and so excited to see what happens with it you know I don't know what it will be I hope to share all the stuff and the insights as I figure out that that part um, and I hope to just build a community around it just to you know improve access using these tools because if you have a if you have a computer and you have an idea like you literally can do everything like that's how i started i just some youtube videos some time and a computer that's it you know and posting it on twitter that's it like and so 
if if I could do it, you could. Because I don't feel like I'm doing anything special. I'm just putting in the work and and sharing the progress and the insights to to hopefully give more, you know, give more direction to people like me. And so appreciate it as usual all the time. And I hope to just, yeah, just keep you all updated on what the progress is. Okay, so this is video diary number one of the new year. Yay, are you doing this in Premiere Rush? Well, I'm doing it on my phone and then I'm gonna put it in Premiere Rush. See, hello, hello. Hi. Yes, so I am in the middle of preparing for my first medical school interview. As you can see, I'm in my studio. I got all the lovely stuff there. This is my desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, yeah. So the big thing is I'm trying to learn how to tie a knot because I need to know how to tie a knot. And I successfully did it. Kind of. I don't know. Yeah. Successfully did it. And as you can see, I'm in the place right now. And it looks crazy because I need to find some good suits. Definitely destroyed the living room. I didn't destroy the living room. You... I just added to the de to the destruction that you did. You destroyed the living room. Whatever. And then in the bathroom, got my nice little steam station. Got this from uh, Marshalls for a nice little nice little price. And this is actually on. I should probably turn that off. But yeah, you know, uh, things are going well. Uh, first interview, pretty excited, and got this tie kind of made. Uh, it doesn't really look that great. Crap. Okay. Okay, so now that I have my suits ready, time to steam them. I got it. So I'm bringing two suits. Um, one actual full suit, and then I'll have kind of like a backup jacket and a backup suit, or backup pants. And I'm bringing a bow tie and a, a regular tie. And I had to figure out how to tie that, but it wasn't too bad. And then uh, got my steamer, Stanley steamer, woo! And then uh, and then uh, two shirts. So uh, so as you can see, got the mirror, looking nice and fresh. Oh yeah, got these for my dad. They're uh, they're shoes, but they look like dress shoes. These things are fresh, man. I like them. So stay tuned. Okay, here we go. We're in the we're in the car. Got the backpack. I mean, maybe you can't really see anything. I just got a backpack. But uh, got my snacks. Realized I didn't eat all day today. Yes. Yes, I am distraught right now. You can't tell. I can. Oh, she can. I am distraught. But it's okay though. It's okay. So here we go. Okay, just got it from my girlfriend's car over there to, uh, we're getting ready to head to the terminal. Here we go. All gates. Portland International Airport. Got my bags, got my stuff. And we're headed to all gates in the terminal. I am ready. <laughs> so it looks like there's nobody here. Oh my gosh. This is like the best time to go flying. Yeah, it's definitely the best time to go flying. Let me just walk down. Do, 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 do. Midday flights, gotta love them. Okay, so made it through the airport. Looks like. Yeah, made it through the airport. Um, I had a, whatchamacallit, I had a, a freaking notebook that I'm bringing, it's the, the rocket book, and 
ended up having to search me because of that. It's kind of stupid, but I don't know. You know, maybe there's some crazy technology. I mean, hey, at this point, you never know what, what may happen. that bad. Uh, had lay over in Oakland and then made my way to Reno. So hopefully it goes good. Um, about to get picked up and prepare for tomorrow. So here we go. Okay, so I am on my way to my interview. And it feels pretty good. Pretty excited about this. Uh, uh, it's about a mile and a half walk away, so Hopefully I have a good walk, clear my head, and let's get ready for action. Here we go. Okay, first and foremost, the Google be tripping because I'm thinking I'm going to just be taking a, a nice leisurely stroll, and I'm going to be taking a stroll on a freaking highway for about a mile and a half, not a mile and a half, but it's going to be, this is going to be crazy. So, uh, I mean, what you know is you know. So hopefully I don't get hit right now. <laughs> hopefully, and I make it. After a long time, finally made it to University of Nevada, Reno. So now, time to find where I'm supposed to be meeting. I think it's the Pennington Medical Education Center. So hopefully this goes well. Took a while, but finally made it. Finally made it. Okay, so. I just got back from my interview, or the welcome day, first part of the interview, and it was pretty good. Um, one of the things that I noticed is that with the, with the interview process that they're doing, uh, you know, I learned a lot about just things that like I, I liked about the school. And so uh, with it, I'm really excited, you know, definitely it's opened my, arm, my eyes to like this being one of the tops one of the top schools on my list, uh, especially when I was looking at it, uh, when I was applying to it, kind of reinstilled that. Uh, another thing was that, you know, with my, with the, the interview process that they're doing, I'm, the people that are going to be interviewing me have not, have no idea what, like, they don't know anything about me. And so, uh, so with all my interviews and stuff, you know, I'm like preparing or mentally preparing, but, um, it's in terms of, they're not going to cross-reference the stuff that I I talked about in my interview or in my application. They're not going to bring that stuff up. And so I think it's going to be on me to kind of like talk about that stuff um, and tie and get to medicine without them prompting me to it. And so, uh, so it should be really interesting. So we'll see. Okay, so I'm here day two of my interview and I forgot to eat. So obviously I'm going to head to canes and check out what they're talking about for this interview here we go i got the school of medicine at university of nevada reno we're about to head to my interview okay so interview is over i'm back at the airport had a pretty interesting experience and yeah yeah i you know, we'll see how this uh, we'll see how this flight goes. Back in Reno Airport. Here we go. Time to finish off the trip. Yo, yo, yo! This is Steve from Stuck on an Island. I definitely appreciate you taking the time to check out my work. Follow me on all the social nets. Be sure to check out my studio, Illtopia, on all the other platforms. And if you want to get some merch, check out shop.illtopia.com.